Hello, my name is Michael Lynn, and I am super excited because today I have decided to make my first ever bookish YouTube video. And I'm really excited about this because I love watching them and I love reading so much that I just feel like I can't sit down and watch these videos anymore. I have to contribute. So basically I thought I would get this whole thing started by talking about the books that I read in the month of June. Okay, so the first book I read in June is called I Take You, and that was written by Eliza Kennedy. This is actually her first novel. Um, I took the book from the library, so I don't have the cover to show you guys, unfortunately, but I'm hoping that my fantastic boyfriend can throw it somewhere around here because he's gonna edit this and do magic things for me. So I Take You tells the story of Lily Wilder. She is a 30 year old woman living in New York City. She's working a successful career that she loves. She works at a law firm and she's engaged to a wonderful man named Will. The only problem with that is she loves to party drinking, drugs, she's not afraid to do any of that, and especially hooking up with guys all the time. Um, so you can see how this can cause a problem when you're about a week away from your wedding to your beloved fiance. Um, so the story takes place a week before their marriage or their wedding, um, and they go down to Florida from New York, and that's where Lily grew up, that's where her family is, and basically everybody is trying to get her to call off the wedding. You know, she's lying to Will, she's not being honest with herself, she's not a monogamous person, and everybody who cares about her really wants to see her just let Will go and live her life and accept the, you know, the way that she is. Um, and lots of craziness ensues in the meantime. Uh, this book is genuinely funny. I really liked it. And considering it's Kennedy's first novel, I really look forward to seeing if she writes anything else and if it'll be as funny as this one was. Um, it's also quite sexy. It, so this is definitely the type of book I would recommend if you're going through a bit of a slump and you need like a palate cleanser or something that's like lighthearted after reading a couple of really heavy books. Um, it wasn't a favorite of mine, but it was a lot of fun to read and I feel like it's the perfect thing to grab when everything else seems kind of dark or heavy or like super serious. And that's I Take You by Eliza Kennedy. So the second book I read in the month of June is Amy and Roger's Epic Detour by Morgan Matson. This is a YA contemporary novel that tells the story of Amy and Roger, two teenagers who go on a road trip from California to Connecticut. Um, the reason they go on this road trip is because Amy's father recently passed away in a car accident and her family's kind of in shambles because of it. Her brother ends up in rehab, her mother relocates to Connecticut to get a new job, to live with her mom temporarily, and Amy is meant to move to Connecticut with her mother, but she has to bring the family car and she had to finish up her junior year of high school. Roger is, a fam is the son of a family friend, um, and so he is the one who helps Amy because she doesn't really want to drive, she doesn't really like cars right now because of what happened to her father. So they end up going on this road trip and at first everything is planned out. Amy's mom has picked the hotels they'll stay in and the route they're going to take and all of that stuff and Roger's pretty disappointed and Amy is just mad enough and sad enough at everything going on in her life that she decides that they will break the rules and because of that they experience a very epic detour. So basically the book just talks about the people they meet along the way, uh, the things that, that happen to them that kind of help them deal with their, you know, the sad things in their life, uh, the heartbreak, love, family, all those kinds of things. Uh, and this was a really sweet story. I finished the book with a smile on my face. Uh, another thing I really liked about this book was it really did give the idea of like a road trip sort of feel. There are these really great pages scattered throughout. Um, Amy's mother gave her a scrapbook so she, you know, saves receipts and she takes some pictures 
and there's like playlists with actual bands and actual songs on it and I loved that. My only complaint is that, and this is probably a great thing for some people, Morgan Matson is, I mean, it's not a huge book by any means, but Morgan Matson is very wordy when it comes to emotions and I felt like it, she just kind of kept saying the same thing in a different way, especially about the grief that Amy was going through. And that's fantastic for some people and I'm sure it helps some people and it does really give you the vibe, but I kind of felt like it was unnecessary um, and weighed the book down. Not her emotions, of course. We want to learn about what happened to her and how she's healing or how she will heal, but mostly it's just the fact that I felt like it was very repetitive. Um, but that being said, this is my second Morgan Matson novel. Uh, the first one I read was her most recent Since You've Been Gone, which I kind of felt the same way about that too in terms of how wordy it was. But uh, yeah, I, I will definitely read more of her books. They all pretty much take place in the summer. They're all YA contemporaries and those are really fun books to read. Again, great palette cleansers and really great things to pick up for vacation. So that's Amy and Rogers Epic Detour by Morgan Matson. And then finally, a huge change of pace from the last two books. My final book in June was The Walls Around Us by Nova Ren Suma. Nova Ren Suma's forte is pretty much supernatural, paranormal, psychological thriller. Um, this is a YA book as well. Uh, this, the only one that wasn't was I Take You because it was about a 30 year old and sex and things like that. So obviously not exactly YA material, but um, this is a YA novel that uh, a lot of people dubbed Orange is the New Black Swan. I love the movie Black Swan. I love the TV show Orange is the New Black and it just seemed like the perfect combo for me. Um, I got this as a birthday gift from my boyfriend uh, because I almost didn't want to read this. I read an Overrun Suma book last summer um, called Imaginary Girls and I kind of was disappointed by it. I'm pretty sure I gave it like one star on Goodreads, which is kind of cruel of me. I feel bad about that still. Um, this one was different though. I really enjoyed this one. Uh, it's definitely heavy. It's definitely dark, but it was very intriguing and it tells the story if there's two different perspectives. The first perspective is a girl named Amber. Um, she lives in the Aurora Hills Juvenile Detention Center for young women. And and so we're learning her perspective. Meanwhile, we're also learning about Violet, who is this like prima ballerina. She's 18. She's about to go to Juilliard. Everything's wonderful for her. And these are two very different stories, except they connect by one person named Oriana. And Oriana was Violet's best friend, and Oriana gets put into the detention center. Um, so basically the book talks about why that happened, how that happened, and basically so much more than that, because there are a lot of like weird elements to it that are not everyday normal situations. Um, so pretty much I think Nova and Suma, if you're reading her, you're going to have a weird twist, like like magical realism sort of, um, without much of an explanation. Um, but I don't wanna say too much because that's what's fun about reading this book. Um, I just really, really thought it was, it was a thinker for me. Um, at first I wasn't sure if I liked it. And the more I thought about it, I think there's so much more to it than what I initially thought. And then to top it all off, I feel like I'm not a big rereader of books only because I have so many books on my shelf that I have not yet read. Um, but I feel like this would be a really good book that if you did enjoy, or if you are not really sure, but you mostly enjoyed it, to reread because I think there's gonna be some things that you're gonna pick up on that maybe you missed the first time and I think that's really neat. And this book has gotten a lot of praise. So if you're interested, check it out. The Walls Around Us by Nova Ren Suma. Look at that cover, it's a beaut. And those are the three books that I read in June. I look forward to talking to you guys about the books I read in July. And I really hope I can do some more videos for you guys, talk about all different things involving books and maybe some other stuff too. I really hope you liked it and I'll see you soon.